It's my new car. Yeah, so one of the things we've been talking about a lot lately is uh, Dan Snyder. Dan Snyder, the owner of the Redskins. And what's he going to do with his radio properties? He bought them a bunch of years ago. They're not worth very much money. I mean, they've lost value. They're two grunky AMers, 980 and 570, and two FM rim shots, 1027 and 943. And you know what? I don't think they're going to be that terribly valuable to anybody. Maybe some religious broadcaster or some Spanish broadcaster or some ethnic broadcaster might want them, but yeah, they're not really, you know, it's a, it's a hodgepodge of signals. So what I was thinking is one of the, one of the probably one of the most lucrative deals for Snyder would be to package the radio rights to the Redskins <laughs> with that, uh, with that, uh, the stations in it and sell it all as a package, okay? So you get those four signals plus the Redskins radio rights for five or ten years or something like that. And somebody would like that, you know, and I was thinking now, okay, if that happens, and probably, you know, it's probably a smart deal for Snyder to get out of the business. I mean, he would still run the Redskins radio network. So he would still produce the show, you know, own games and all that. And he'd still, in cooperation with all the TV stations, you know, he does all those Redskins shows that are produced by him, by the Redskins, whatever organization. So he still has a lot of control over the team. He had, he'd have control over the radio coverage of the team and all that. So who would want to buy those uh, stations, Snyder stations, the Red Zebra stations? Well, I don't know. You know, somebody said maybe an outside broadcaster like Adams or somebody or Saga. But you know what? What are they going to do with a bunch of hillbilly signals and the Redskins radio rights? First of all, they're not going to be able to afford the Redskins radio rights because that's going to be the big kahuna dollar-wise of the package. So, you know... Uh, it's going to be somebody in the market already. And as I said, Cumulus would be the most likely possibility. They own WMAL, WRQX. The problem there is that Cumulus is broke. Their stock is virtually worth, what's it, worth a dollar a share. They're in a lot of debt. You know, they probably are not... Yeah, but, they, but that would be a great deal for them because they need more signals. They only have two stations in the market. And that would be cool. Yeah, you know, the Redskins would be great on WMAL. That'd be a great boot benefit for them and all that. And they could use those other signals and run a sports talker or do something else. But the problem is, again, uh, I don't think Cubulus knows much what it's doing. They're in a lot of debt. Blah, 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 blah. Probably not going to end up doing that. So the other deal would be for CBS to buy Dan Snyder stations and stuff because that would be great. You know, first off, though, problem with that is CBS is in a budget cutting mode right now so they're probably not going to want to spend money on this they're probably not going to want to spend money on the Redskins radio rights because they're going to be an arm they're going to be a shitload of cash for that so <laughs> but the advantage is they could put um, the Redskins back on WJFK they could get rid of that other sports talker WTEM and sell off the signals or whatever and then they would be the only sports talker in town, so they would increase the billing and increase the ratings for WJFK. You know, if, they, if, if it was another time and era in economy, that might be really worth thinking about, but I doubt that's going to happen. The other possibility I was thinking is Hubbard. Hubbard basically is WTOP here in the Washington market. That's it. They do have WFED, but that's, um, you know, footnote. Anyway, they can use more signals. They can use more prestige. You know, um, hey, they do have a lot of signals, but they don't have a lot of stations. So, I mean, you know, getting rid of some signals, moving those around doesn't, you know, it's probably not that big of a deal for them. But they could, you know, they could just take WTEM and have a sports talker along with WTE, WTOP and put the Redskins on WTOP and make it even more of a powerhouse. Hmm? Yeah, it gets your YouTube videos better seen. Butt shots. <laughs> Yeah, but all this talk is kind of nonsense, I think, because nothing's going to happen this season. The Redskins season's already getting going, and if there are any deals that were going to be made, they'd have been probably made in the spring, get everything set up, you know, it's already, the promotional shit is already in the deal, already rolling and whatever, so I don't think we're going to see any Dan Center sell his radio stations right now. Plus, it would be a distraction for him. He needs to be focusing on the team. <laughs> but it's an interesting mental masturbation, I guess. Anyway, 
So there's a lot of talk in the mailbag about who's going to be replacing Derek McGinty at Channel 9. You know, we broke the news there on DCR TV that Derek McGinty is going to be leaving Channel 9, at least as a full-time anchor in early September. And so uh, who's going to be replacing him? Well, there's some talk about some anchor coming up from Phoenix. There were some rumblings that maybe um, Tony Perkins, you know, the guy in Psycho. Oh, no, wait, that, that's the wrong Tony Perkins. Uh, Tony Perkins over there on Channel 5, the old radio guy went over to Good Morning America and came back to DC. Blah, 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 and I was now with Channel 5 doing the, was doing weather, now he's doing tinkering. Anyway, Tony says, no, 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 it ain't me, babe. But, you know, doesn't matter. What is Gannett? It's called Tegna. The Tegna, they changed their broadcasting arm to Tegna. What a horrible name. Who thought that one up? Tegna. Just sounds stupid. Why don't they just call it stupid? <laughs> anyway. So it doesn't look like uh, Derek McGinty's going to be landing another TV gig in the Washington market since he will be freelancing at Channel 9 doing that, uh, some weekend show, Capital Download, I think it's called. So what's he, what else is he going to do, write a book or do something else? You know, I think he should get back into radio. Originally, I think, wasn't he over at WAMU before his whole TV thing? I think he should get back into radio, and the place I think he would be perfect would be WNEW, CBS news talker that's floundering in the mud and has been doing so for three and a half years. What if they put... What if they put Derek McGinty on in middays, the midday host from, say, 10 to 2 or 11 to 3 or something like that? You know, that would get kind of, you know, it would compete with Kojo over there on WAMU and Diane Rehm, and, and he's very well known in the Washington market, and I don't know, I think something like that would be a really cool thing to do. They would have news blocks in the morning and afternoon, and then middays they would have a cool talk show locally oriented with Derek McGinty. You know, I think, and then they could hype it, which they don't yeah. I I think that's probably beyond CBS's pay grade in terms of ideas. I don't think they are paid for ideas like that, so they should send me a consultant's fee. But I think that hiring Derek McGinty to do middays on WNEW would be just what they need or one important thing of what they need to get that station rolling. But again, CBS doesn't seem to give a rat's ass. You know, I've given them lots of suggestions over the years about how to get that station up and running, and it's floundering, and they don't listen to me, and what are you going to do? Ha! Huh? So I'm asking my uh, readers and viewers what to what to do to get uh, more people to watch these Dave TVs, and they say upside down video. That's the way to go. And lots of cut, lots of quick cuts, and zooming cameras, and swooshing noises, and oh my God, there's a bear coming after me. Ah! It's not a bear. It's Jack Diamond in a bear costume. Ah. Uh... A peaceful day. Yes, this is the uh, 30th of August, 2015, Dave TV. Hey, everybody. We're back. We're back. <laughs> I don't know, lots of quick cuts, lots of cameras moving all around, kinetic. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? Ah, this is, this is the life down here. This is the kind of place I want to have. This is the spread I want to have, but I can't do it without your for donations. So lots and lots of donations from you guys, okay? 18th anniversary for DCRTV. It's amazing to think that we started, I started DCRTV 18 years ago, September 1997. Back before we had broadband internet and I was still doing dial-up. I remember all that. Ah, oh, the memories. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. Um, 18th anniversary. So if you haven't made a donation this year, or even if you had, or if you've never made a donation to DCRTV, if you visit the site on a regular basis, please make a donation. Just send it to my PayPal. Go to PayPal. If you have a PayPal account, just send it to DCRDV at DCRDV.com or send it to DCRDV at Hotmail.com. Either one will work just fine. You can also pop it in the mail. That's Dave Hughes, 1981 B Villa Ridge Drive, Reston, VA, 20191. The address is right there on our little thing on the front page where we're hyping this 18th anniversary fundraiser. And don't forget, if you make an $18 donation, we'll give you a whole year of DCRDV+. Plus. That's right. Jam-packed with memories of DC and Baltimore radio TV history and everything else. <sighs> so do it, baby, won't ya? So I was watching this guy who does these videos from the Philippines and he's saying the best way to increase your YouTube 
viewership is to make sure the frame rate you input is the same as the frame rate you output so you don't have that herky jerky jerky motion on your videos I'm going that's great but how do you get the damn jerk who hosts the videos how do you fix that one huh <laughs> boom, 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 boom. Hey, take my wife please okay 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 here's how we increase DCR TV's uh, video hits Hello. Hi. Shirtless male runners. On the next D <laughs> take two. Which DC radio program director's head is in the box? Let's take a look. Take 412. On the next Dave TV, Bennett Sear discusses his sex change operation. Bennett to Betsy. On the next Dave TV. Here we are on Allenwood Drive in Great Falls, Virginia, at the home of Don Geronimo. Well, not really. <laughs> anyway, uh, he's long moved from there, so don't go there. Doesn't live there anymore. Back in Hawaii, I hear, doing the Don Ho thing. Don who? In Don Ho land. Please help me afford a place like this. Make an $18 donation, dollar donation now to DCR TV. Memo to our all Storm Team 4 weathercasters. In the summer, always jack up the temperature two or three degrees in your forecast. And in the winter, always jack it down two or three degrees. This has been a memo to all the NBC4 Storm Team 4 meteorologists, quote unquote. That's all. Oh, and then there's my Hillary Howard pet peeve. She's, I love Hillary. She's so friendly. She has that warm, friendly voice. But anyhow, on WTOP, she'll say stuff like, right at the top of the hour, right before the, right at the top of the hour, she'll say something like, stock market down, 354. Well, she's saying stock market down, comma, it's 354 in the afternoon. But the way she says it, stock market down, 354, makes it sound like the stock market is down 354 points. Huh? Justin Timberhead. This is Jim Farley's retirement pad in Fort Myers, Florida. Yes, it's time to stop this edition of Dave TV and put it out of its misery. All comedy sizings created by Rob Carson. Blame him. God bless you and adios, amigos. Uh, it's Jack Diamond in a bear costume. It's Jack Diamond in a bear costume.